This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Bubble gum, 10 cent candy bars, 15 cent hamburgers. Hamburgers. When a dollar went a long way, and so did 24 hours. The 60s and the 70s, dwelling place of the lost generation. We who grew up in this era had no real heroes. Our role models came from the imaginations of others. Our meager lives were formed by and revolved around weekly installments of our favorite TV programs. Welcome to a place that your parents didn't understand. A place that exists somewhere between the forefront of recollectable memory and the edge of everyday thought. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome home. Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, with our other hosts, uh, Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley. We're here to talk about 60s and 70s television, and as you probably guessed by all this stuff up here, uh, we're going to talk about uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, phenomena of the 60s, Beverly Hillbillies. And not just Beverly Hillbillies, but we're going to discuss the entire uh, Mayberry versus Hooterville controversy, which we know is very big right now. Uh, of course, uh, when we refer to Mayberry and Hooterville, we're referring to Mayberry as the entire uh, Tri-City, Mayberry, uh, Mount Pilot, and uh, Raleigh area. And Hooterville, uh, we're talking about Hooterville and Pixley, and not to mention Bug, Bug Tussle. Or Bug. even um, Beverly Hills, but... Right. Yeah. <laughs> but that's... So, so to give you an idea of what we're discussing, uh, we're uh, Mayberry, of course, Andy Griffith's show, and Mayberry RFD, and Gomer Pyle, and is that it? I think Basically, that's it. Well, they yeah. did take the character Goober and put him onto Hee Haw. Yeah. But I don't that, think that's a very really tenuous a, connection. That's a, yeah, that's a, yeah. a stringy spin-off kind yeah. of thing. And then, of course, on the, uh, uh, the so that's the Mayberry side. Then there's the the Paul Henning universe side. Of course, Paul Henning was the one who created things like Beverly Hillbillies and and Green Acres and Petticoat Junction, and I think that's it on that side. Yeah, that's unless I'm much, missing. That's pretty much all. So. Um, uh, of course, these were like uh, the the mainstay of uh, of CBS's uh, schedule in the 60s, uh, and uh, allowed them to pretty much vault ahead. Although the critics absolutely hated all these shows, the public loved them. So uh, they were on the air for years and years. And then in 1970, uh, uh, the uh, the high ups at CBS decided, well, uh, we don't want any of these rural comedies anymore because they're not making. They're not getting the right demographics for the audience and all this. We're all getting all these old people. So so they all got canceled all at once. And ironically, it uh, allowed uh, shows like All in the Family and MASH to get on the air because there was these huge holes in the schedule. But anyways, uh, but that's uh, for another show. Today, we're talking about Mayberry versus Hooterville. And I'll turn it right over to Wilbert with his first point for the evening. Well, by golly, when you look at these shows, you look and there's... Um just the, the characters involved here. We can look at the um, the the camaraderie between Andy and and um, and Barney. Mm -hmm. There's just they just worked so well together as a team. Although Barney always felt like he should probably be the leader or the one to stand out. It's always Andy who is well definitely the star. So he always knows what's going on and how to figure out every problem. You know, and it's 
like he can do it simply. He didn't need to have his gun with him, you know. He's the sheriff and all, but yet. And then he, you go home, and here's little Opie and Amy. Mm -hmm. and, and well, something both shows, <coughs> both types of shows had that they don't have really a lot on TV anymore is the the uh, family matriarch. You had Aunt B, who was definitely the cornerstone of Andy's household. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you had Granny. You had Kate Bradley. Women that were the um, the cornerstone, the focus of the family. You yeah, know, pretty uh, much of the show, the anchor. really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we really got that anymore. You don't see that today. You, you saw it a little bit in the 70s with stuff like uh, Maud, is the one I could think offhand. Well, Maud yeah. is about Maud. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, basically. But, I mean, but yeah, you don't see that today, really. You don't see a woman being pretty much, which is which is ironic considering all the uh, uh, the, the strides that women's rights have made between the '60s and the '80s. Well, I mean, it, it's there, but it's it's not as um, not as uh, blatant where these shows were. I mean, they they focused on the the males that were in the show, and yet they were there. The the ladies were there. I think that's what it is. Because now you do have shows that are. are or, well, they, what, uh, uh, Murphy Brown or yeah. uh, something. Those, you know. are, those are like 80, you know, this is where <coughs> the woman was home. That, I mean, was that's, home. Right, yeah. that's the she, difference. She, she, she was the rock of the show, more or less. Mm -hmm. And I don't think shows had that anymore, but it's interesting that all of these shows have had hung that. On because, because I that. mean, yeah. Granny was actually Jed's mother-in-law. <coughs> yeah. Right. She's Ellie's grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Kate was actually, Uncle Joe was actually the oldest member of the family, but Kate was the one in charge. Well, that's because Uncle Joe was moving, was moving kind of slow. Oh, oh, and and he was <laughs> Then when, they got, when, when Kate went away and Joe had to run it, boy, they had to bring in uh, June Lockhart. Yeah, <laughs> Lockhart. She was yeah. yeah. She was there. <laughs> that, was, that was interesting. <laughs> he just couldn't do it alone, by golly. Okay. But, um,. Then you've got your uh, your definite comical characters. You've got uh, well, well, Barney was probably mm -hmm. the comical character of the Andy Griffith thing. But then before, um, oh, well, Goober, Goober, Goober weren't funny. Goober and Gomer are, but see, Gomer was just so so darn comical that he got his own oh, show. Sure. <laughs> and it just left Goober there to run the gas station uh -huh. by himself. Then you've got your um, well, Otis. Otis. <laughs> Well, let's let, let's not forget Floyd, for goodness sake. Well, Floyd, oh. yeah, you, you, you can't forget Floyd, no. No, he's, <laughs> Floyd, he's, uh, but he, he had a business. Yeah, everybody, that was an interesting thing, too. Everybody just about had a business, except Otis, but I guess his Otis was to be the town drug. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was, that that was his business. Yeah. Back in the days when you had a town yeah, drug. Right. They probably advertised needed mm -hmm. town drunk. Right. They just you had to give Andy something to do because they sure didn't go out and bust those moonshiners. <laughs> well, yeah. moonshiners were out there. They didn't come into town that often, I guess. <clears throat> and it's like every... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Floyd. <laughs> 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 okay, and Howard. What was Howard? Howard Remember? Sprigg. He yeah, was, was like the his, editor uh, of the... Um, what, what did he do? He still lived with his mother. I mean, what was his... his was he the... Did he run the paper? Did I he think just he hang did. around in the barber shop and wait for some news to happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was, that was like the nerve center of the town, you know. <laughs> what did they do? A monthly Floyd's paper barber that came out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> More like a periodical than a newspaper. And he was always so <laughs> hip and There wasn't yeah, really a lot you know, going the, on. The so. Mayberry thing, they were like, um, like, a, like um, a warmity. Isn't that the word they use now for these shows? That they're funny, but... Gee, don't they just strike a nerve? Don't you just know every things like that happen right. and everything? Mm -hmm. Where the uh, Petticoat Junction, Green Acres, Beverly Hillbillies was out and out comedy. Right. Because they were so outlandish. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons that those shows went off was people from the hills started becoming offended at the way they were portrayed on these shows. Yeah. Saying, you know, look, we're not idiots. We're <laughs> Well, we're, we're, we we know about the world. We're not mm. kept well, hey, up here. Jethro in the wasn't an idiot. He had his sixth grade education. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was a, a, what a brain going to be a brain surgeon, a frog right. man, um, <laughs> astronaut at one point. Astronaut at one point. Yeah, yeah. he let's say he just wanted to be anything Same. where there would be girls. Yeah, Playboy, international <laughs> Playboy. Though. Well, that was and a he director, job. He directed the movies. He yeah. was a he was he was JB. <laughs> yes, JB. <laughs> 
Yeah. Ellie Mae was his yes girl, and he was, uh, he was a secret agent. He was double lot seven. Yeah. <laughs> but was it, you know, th those situations were so far out, and uh, the Mayberry situations were... Well, were, you know, a little bit more realistic. Yeah. Realistic, yeah, yeah. Things that really happened. Yeah. I have I have an aunt who grew up in Kentucky, and she says, uh, you can tell I have an aunt and I grew up near there because I don't say aunt. <laughs> yeah. And she says, you know, sometimes I just watch Andy Griffith and cry because it reminds me of home so much. So I guess that's how real that was. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, then you go to stuff like Green Acres, which is almost, I mean, of the of the three shows on that, uh, of that area, that's like like the most surrealistic of all of them because it's just like i mean <laughs> i mean it was it was so ahead of its time of like it's like they they made references to the credits uh -huh. like like i was watching a show and they and and there was like a drucker's store and they're having an argument and it's just at the beginning of the show and the credits are still rolling you know like written by and all this and and one of them says wait a minute wait a minute they're not going to listen to us till the names are done and so they just sat there <laughs> until the credits were done, and then they started talking. I mean, it's just like, I mean, it was, like, you, you see that stuff like on, uh, on Gary Shandling or on Moonlighting or, yeah. or something like that, but this was like, you know, in the 60s when nobody was doing that. Well, actually, George Burns had broken the third wall. Okay, I, that, that's, that's, that, I, I will, But yeah, they true. got funny with it on Green Acres and right. stuff. I mean, <laughs> we didn't pay any attention to the credits. Why did they? Right. <laughs> But, uh, it, I mean, of course, the thing is, in a lot of ways, it was a, um, you see a show, a show a lot like Green Acre, as far as I'm concerned, almost, in a lot of ways, the, pretty much the same show, when you bring it down to its basic con uh, concepts, is both of the, of the Bob Newhart shows are very much like Green Acres, of a, of a guy, is like a, a guy who's normal in the middle of... Uh, uh, just a whole world of insanity. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think Mr. Douglas was all that. Uh, well, he was pretty. He was anybody pretty that normal. would live in that house for those years, they yeah. never bother to fix it up. Well, he tried, but um, who did he have to work with? Eb, um, <laughs> yikes, Alf and Ralph Monroe. <laughs> uh, well, that, I'm saying, that poor was, closet never if did if get if fixed, did it? This man was sewed together when he put his foot down on these people, but no, he was going to be nice. Well, well, well he nice tried. Guy. Anytime I mean, that he tried, they would get all hurt. <laughs> They'd get, oh, well, gee, Mr. Douglas, um, <laughs> yeah. we uh, hurt We're our just, You know, yeah. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> the city slicker are you? <laughs> uh -huh. Gee, what can we do? Yeah, he didn't want to feel like uh, he was like some. And so he'd, he'd soften up, guy. and then she would go, Ralph would go and chase. Uh, um, Hank Kimball down, and they right. never get anything. Yeah. <laughs> they never know what happened to Alf. Yeah, Alf just disappeared after a while, but they still had Ralph running around there, and there. Josephine saying, the plumber soon. How many people are going to put up with those? I mean, if I had to, if I had to spend two or three years of my life climbing up the phone pole to talk on the telephone, no, no. Well, like, well, I mean, again, the same thing. I mean, you look at the the '80s New Heart show compared to this, and it's the same. It's it's very much the same thing as it. It's like, why does he put up with all this? Why does this? he put up with these people, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he just, and it gets to the point after a while, and it's the same thing that he just says, okay, I'm going to take this as a given that these people do these things. You know? <laughs> I'd leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, then you wouldn't have a show. That's the that's trouble. That's true. That's, I mean, that's the you only have, thing. I mean, it, would, there, it wouldn't make, it, it, you wouldn't have a show with just the crazy people and then not, like, the center of, like, the fall guy, the straight man for yeah, everybody. I, 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 I mean, I, you got to have the straight man in the middle to like uh, for everybody to play off of. And then they did have the show on one time on Green Acres where um, they all the, everybody else got together and decided, well, heck, Mr. Douglas is always dressed up. We'll put on our Sunday best too, and mm -hmm. it, it almost made him wreck the car. He's yeah. driving along. <laughs> People are out here all dressed up and <laughs> got on their good clothes. He's driving all over the place, going to run into poles and things, hit into the cornfield, and everybody's all dressed up. And he had to deal with Mr. Haney. Oh, Mr. Douglas. <laughs> Anytime he needed something, Mr. Haney always had it, but it right. was well, never Mr. anything Haney that would work. Well, Mr. Haney also would convince him that he needed, needed this. It. That's like when, true. Like when Ed you was going to go to school. The... Oh, you're going to send that boy to school with a, a raccoon goat. That's what I just going to, have here. Mr. Haney is going to college, kid. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> that's <a> bear cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's extra. And a ukulele. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Douglas. <laughs> ah. Oh my! But let's let, let's let's look back here. We got um. Well, in the Gomer Pyle um, show now that in itself is 
very unlikely because anybody who'd been to the Marines or something <laughs> would come back and they would laugh louder yeah, than yeah. you. Would. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, no, no. No, I've, I've heard those diehard Marines complain about that one. No, no, they wouldn't get, you know, they thought, well, would you, if we could get away with that stuff, <laughs> we'd have stayed in the Marines for yeah. a while longer. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's funny how Gomer never, um, never moved along. He stayed there with all his buddies, the same never sergeant. Got, never got shipped off to Nam or <laughs> yeah, anything. No, uh, no, Gomer <laughs> Powell never went to Nam, no. that's for sure. <laughs> well, neither did, uh, neither did Duke or yeah. Sergeant. <laughs> Sergeant Carter. Well, they did, like, so they could, they they did all this on dates with Miss Bunny and everybody. They just did all this training and well, they never went and fought anybody. I mean, it's like at the time wait a minute. Going yeah. yeah. <laughs> they well, never mentioned war on that show. That's true. Yeah. They never. I don't did. think they've ever mentioned that there was something going on. Right. It was just always well. Here we are, and we're training, and we're training, and we're training, <laughs> and and we we'll do be things, ready. and we're ready <laughs> in case we're ever sent, which we never are. But. Is it? Well, they got with those those weekend furloughs, you know. Yeah. <laughs> They'd go out out. Well, Gomer'd go out with Lou Ann and <laughs> Sergeant Miss Bunny and Duke with anything that walked. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever had a friend. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no who was that? Was it? Is it? Is it? Well, I guess it's Miss Bunny and Sergeant Carter's mother. Those are. There's there's your mainstay of that show, the the rock that's at home on that one is. Well, I guess, but they never went there that much. Not often enough, but it, she you did see her, and when she weren't, the, yeah, she made an impact. By golly, well, Miss Bunny, I guess she's like the stabilizing force there. Lou Ann, kind of too, but she was a dick. <laughs> Lou Ann was kind of out in left field somewhere. Yeah. That's why she and Gomer got along so well. Yeah. I imagine so. <laughs> Imagine so. Never find out where Lou Ann was from, though. No. She had that accent, but you... <laughs> What's we didn't know. Poovy? Lou Ann Poovy. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Poovy. Sounds like something from a Dr. Seuss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Dr. <Doc> Poovy. <laughs> 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 uh, but I don't know where Lou Ann came from. And Duke, don't know if Duke had a last name. And then there's <laughs> the... Um, Duke. <laughs> who was it, that other... Uh, there's somebody else that was always there with Sergeant Carter that... It helped him. I don't remember what his name. His, was. his adjutant or something. Yeah, right? but he was always. He's usually <coughs> just. He's like. It looks like he was in charge of telling Sergeant Carter that some big official was coming. That was his right. main job. But how many just Sergeant to come by and say, "Hide Gomer, quick! Uh, we're uh, <laughs> the general's coming." Uh, does anyone remember when they actually put blended the Beverly Hillbillies with Petticoat Junction? Do you want to see those? I didn't. I I, I know it happened, okay. but I never. When when um, let me go through Betty Joe, Bobby Joe, Billy Joe. Betty Joe had the baby. Okay. They decided out of the blue to send Granny to help. Ah. But One the way these. they had Granny explain to her family why she was going to Hooterville was was like, well, you remember Joe's aunt, cousin Sue from way back, so and so, so, and they, they go through, she go through this long story about all these people from Bug Tussle and where have you, and then say, well, and Betty Jo had the baby. Ah. <laughs> so it made no sense at all why Granny was really going back, except that Bug Tussle must lay somewhere near Hooterville. Well, we, we assume. <laughs> we had to, the, yeah. the, the metropolitan area. And, and where, where the <laughs> heck are these Hooterville. places anyway? Ever, ever wonder where Tennessee. Bug Tussle is in Tennessee? Because well, well, yeah, well, Granny always talked about she was from Tennessee. But where's Hooterville? <laughs> Hooterville? Near Tennessee. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. And so, we uh, figure in Tennessee. It must be. Pixley must be close to there, too, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you figure it's not really deep south. Uh, you never really, you never really see that. No, deep south. Well, um, Mayberry and the things were actually right. deep they were south. In South right. Carolina. Right. Yeah. They are, well, now, we, Granny we was got that figured out. Yeah. Right, but, but you figure so you figure it's it's not it's got to be like the middle south, kind of kind of <laughs> so, leading toward the Ozarks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because you got to have the so flat land be pretty much green Tennessee. acres there. I mean, that's that's pretty much where. Well, it's there so, are uh, valleys between those mountains. Okay, but. Um, uh, well, I guess they never really said where exactly they were going. When he left New York, it was just he's going to Green Acres. To Green Acres. <laughs> it's to it's not country. only the name of the, the country. It's not only the, the name country. of the, sto the show. It's where they live. They live in Green, Green Acres. Acres. Well, you know, they, they were on the Cannonballs train line. Yeah, yeah. They were on the line, so they had to be somewhere between Hooterville and, and Pixley. Pixley, yeah. But Bug Tussle must have been somewhere 
You already get the impression that Bug Tussle was a good distance away, though. Yeah, Bug Tussle's in the hills. Right. It was the hills. Well, that was the big city, though. That's what Granny talked about, going to Bug Tussle, because they kept the lights on till 9 o'clock, you know? <laughs> Ooh. And you know what went on in those back rooms after the lights went on at night? Uh -huh. after, after the lights went out at 9 o'clock, <laughs> they played checkers. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, they'd be playing checkers till the cows came home, right. I guess. Of course, not, not that they had cows up there in the hills, necessarily. But then again, well, that's where we're well, talking. Beverly Hillbillies was Hank my favorite Kimble out of all now. of them. <laughs> out, out of the whole group. Except, well, you know, I did like the uh, Petticoat Junction. But I think um, Beverly Hillbillies was my definite favorite. Right. Because Ellie had all the critters. Mm -hmm. And it was just so, I liked the characters better. Right. They, they, I can never understand why they didn't just let Granny go back. <laughs> what she wanted to do, but they were so intent on keeping their little unit together mm -hmm. in this big old house. Well, that, and that was a show where you truly you had somebody, you know, it's like, uh, to a major extent, the uh, the straight man there, you know, in the other shows, you kind of felt sorry for our Oliver every once in a while. It's like, <laughs> geez, how did, how did he get into all this? But then, you know, it, with Beverly Hillbillies, you had Mr. Drysdale, which you could just absolutely hate, you know, it's like, because, oh, yeah. you know, no matter what he was doing, he was doing it for money, and, yeah. and you knew he was trying to rip everybody off, and it's like, yeah, you got him. I about died because I felt out like Miss Jane was like the top secretary for the top insurance company, and she left that job to work for Mr. Drysdale, and he made her do stupid. Why? So she had this, she had she this head trip of her own, you know. wonderful <laughs> bene you know, fringe benefit, she some sort of great dental plan or something, you know, it's like, uh, Come here, and uh, you'll have to wear silly outfits and uh, drive me around. I mean, basically, my yeah, personal chauffeur drove. and uh, chauffeur secretary. You have to convince, uh, and you have to help me convince these hillbillies that 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 I'm God. Yeah, yeah. And to listen to me, no matter what that happens. Yeah. Yeah, I, I figured he must have had some dirt on Jane somehow. <laughs> some sort of some sort of, some <laughs> sort of trash on her. <laughs> And some, I don't know, a, a cache of nude photos. Right. Did you ever think, like, maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, since this was during the 60s, maybe Mr. Drysdale was to represent the evil establishment and Beverly Hillbillies were to hit to for the back-to-earth people. Yeah. Well, there was, there was yeah. a point Look where they... Look how evil this establishment guy is. <laughs> well, there was a point where they, um, they went and, uh, you know... Um, when they met the hippies? Yeah, yeah when they the met hippies. the hippies. And they smoked crawdads. Smoke, smoke crawdads. <laughs> yeah, Granny kept telling about smoke crawdads, crawdads. and they were, whoa, like, wow, wow crawdads, whoa. I knew people like that. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, they were the they were the uh, Hollywood uh, uh, sanitized version of the hippies, you know, yeah. <laughs> which made them more like Robin Hood's Merry Men, right. which is what they uh, yeah. turned out to be, because they thought that Jethro was Robin Hood uh -huh. or something like that at the time. For real. And the Rangers were after him. It was all all done on a on the stage, though. That was pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> they might just kind of run back into each other after a while. It was it was kind of funny, kind of funny. But yeah, you're right. Um, of the things. Uh, the Mayberry whole thing, where they were more realistic, except for Gomer Pyle, but it kind of based more on right. realism. The, the Gomer Pyle show, I mean, the character was fine. It was just the, the whole show did, did was like, no, 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 no. When they and come they marching out, it, it just looks like they're marching off the movie set, doesn't it? Right. <laughs> Same kind of buildings and everything. You know, yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, they're... Uh, was anybody, I don't know if I'm right and remember, if I'm thinking of the right show, but it seems like there was a show on on Mayberry where they put Gomer on the bus and yeah. sent him off. Yeah, yeah, on Andy Griffith, they, there was a show that they sent him off, and you actually, and Andy Griffith went to the camp with him, and, and, <laughs> and, and it was Sergeant Carter's there and all this, and... and Here, uh, take him, I don't want him on my sheriff's yeah, department. It's like, and, yeah, and Andy's like... <laughs> Oh, uh, he's like the last two days, and yet he lasted all those seasons on his own show. <laughs> oh, well. And it was just what, was it that Gomer wanted to do, or was he drafted? No, he wanted to. She, oh, he wanted to be, yeah. He wanted to. And it wasn't a Oh, yeah, send me to the Marines. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, of course, of course, then you had the, the pale imitation of the Andy Griffith show, Mayberry RFD. Yeah. Ken, Ken Berry. By then, it was Barry. just like, there's no Floyd, there's no... Basically, that was Barney was already long since gone. Yeah. Yeah, he went to uh, Mount Pilot, didn't he? I think so. I did forget. Did he become a detective or something? Because I remember Barney coming back for a few with a suit on. Who did, who did they get? Who did they get to replace him? 
Mm. It was uh, it was Jack Burns played the character. Okay. It was like it was the uh, his second decu- deputy, and it was really it was like it's like the the whole show started suffering at that point. That was pretty much the beginning of the end of the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> it was like Barney's gone, you know, and you don't see Floyd and uh, hope he didn't come back to oh, make any appearances at right, all. Right? Yeah. Uh, ain't B, no ain't B. So yeah, that just kind of. Who's Aunt B's friend, Clara? Clara. Clara. Um, Clara's. <laughs> what's her last name? Clara, Clara. Edwards. And Clara. Okay. It, and, and Barney must have been like the Casanova because remember he always going out with. Uh, um, well, Thelma, Thelma Lou. Thelma Lou. Okay, but remember he always called Juanita. that one. Call up Juanita. 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 Down Nita. at the diner. Juanita. Are you singing to her? <laughs> <laughs> doodle doo. <laughs> Just make that up. <laughs> the Don Juan of Mayberry, Barney yeah, Five. Funny. Don Juan, Don Knotts. That's, yeah. that's, that's pretty Same sad. Thing. You're, 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 you're scraping the bottom of the barrel yeah. when you're... Yikes. When Don Knotts is the playboy. <laughs> of course, there, there's still Howard, but he didn't go out much. No, where he was he living with his mother? mother? Remember that one where he caught that big fish? Nobody could catch this fish. This was a, you know, a fish. <laughs> And no one could catch it. So the first time they take Howard fishing, he throws a line in and catches this giant fish. And so everybody's like, gee, now what you going to do with it? So he puts it in an aquarium <laughs> in, in, you know, Raleigh or something. Everybody's like, gee, man, <laughs> the fish ain't the problem no more. Yeah. They all got sad, so he took it back and put it in the pond so nobody could ever catch it again. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that entertained people for a half hour. Yeah, and that's that, that's all they really, you know, that's all it really was. It wasn't like, uh, you know, it wasn't PBS here. We're talking, <laughs> it was it was something real simple. You know, it's like, sit down and just shut off your brain for half an hour and watch this. Yeah. So, uh, kind of slimy hill family. Well, I, I don't know if we want to get into that because I think we're we're running out of time, believe it or not, oh on this gosh. exciting show. Golly. <laughs> well, Shazam. Well, <laughs> <laughs> how, how many more can we go there? Well, uh, we're we're about done uh, for the show, and uh, next show we're going to be having the exciting. Uh, we're going to go through. We've already done a Trek show, our Star Trek show. Now we're going to do all science fiction other than Trek in the 60s and 70s. So we're just going to. I don't know how we're going to cram in a half an hour, but we'll try. For all of us in Vast Wasteland, we'll uh, we'll see you later, and uh, and y'all come back now. Yeah. yeah. Come and listen to my story about a man named Jim.